Hey all you music makers out there, it's Josh. Today I want to show you how to write a convincing orchestral string run uh, on the computer using some sample libraries. Let me show you uh, what I mean by that and we'll get um, down to the nitty gritty details. Okay, cool. And then uh, let's go over here and um, play another spot. So that's the track I wrote uh, a few months back now, and um, this was actually built with uh, not only strings but woodwinds as well. So woodwinds do layer and double in octaves from the strings. For whatever reason, you need something like um, a slurred run. Um, what, what you need to do then is think about uh, how you can make a convincing. So let's get started. First thing is uh, you do have to have a patch or a sample library that has uh, these notes built in where the scripting will slur or uh, transition with legato notes. Um, you can't really pull this off with just a sustain patch or a, a normal long patch. Okay, so um, what I'm going to be using to demonstrate this is using the Hollywood Strings by East West. They have a patch called the, the Slur Runs and the first and second violins. Okay, you'll notice that uh, all the notes are smeared across the board and it's designed in a way where um, it, it can go really fast. Right now, it doesn't sound quite as uh, perfect, and you may even sound hear some weird um, things that you don't necessarily want. But when you program it in, you can actually uh, mold and massage that the way you want it to hear. Now, let's see. Going over to the other patches, I also am using the Hollywood strings for the viola. This one's a little bit different. I actually have it under a rep run because they don't have a slur run patch. And you'll notice that it just keeps triggering the same note over and over while you hold it down. So um, this actually still works because when you're going really fast, um, you don't hear the second or third note. Right? So in context, depending on how fast you're going with your runs, you can use something like this. Now, uh, there are plenty of other um, string patches and libraries out there. LA Scoring Strings, CineSample, Spitfire. Um, there's also uh, Orchestral Tools. Um, there's so many other ones. And, and they all have something similar where they will have slur runs and things like that. So pick one that has that. It has to have legato, okay? That's very important. Second thing is then um, you may have to uh, mess with your release time. So going back over here, you'll notice that right now it's at 700 milliseconds. Depending on how fast you go, you may want to adjust that over to, let's say, 500 milliseconds or even smaller, just depending. So I'm going to bring that back to 700. Somewhere around there. That's close enough. All right, so um, if you look at the notes now, notice how uh, there's actually two events, so violin one and two together, and viola separately. Notice that um, all of these notes from each voice are, are not playing the exact same rhythm. So um, one is kind of behind the other. They're not always consistently behind the other either. But uh, that was done on purpose to give it more of a smear effect. Because again, these are slur runs and you're not supposed to hear every single note uh, individually. Um, it, it should have that smear sound. So um, anything you can do to, uh, to uh, offset those notes from each other will also help a lot. Um, and then the other thing is you can uh, mess with the... Uh, crescendo or the uh, dynamic information using CC11 and CC1 and you'll notice how they're not also copy and pasted they're they're actually performed a little differently all right so 
Uh, one thing to go about it when you actually program in your notes is to record it, but also if you're not a, uh, a great piano player like myself, I'm not a, a piano player in it by any means. I, I, I'm a drummer actually, but um, I, I got in my way around it and I can play scales and things, but you know, it, it's better sometimes just to program it in slower than the actual tempo. So uh, I highly recommend using this uh, activated tempo track, disable it, and then go a lot slower. Um, I'm at 60. Let's just stick with 60. And what I'll do is start with the violin. Let's do a uh, just a major scale. All right, I'm going to do that one more time with the violas this time. Great. So you get two separate takes. And then what you can do from there is um, just make sure that the notes um, somewhat line up from with each other. Great. Um, on the viola, or one of these, actually it's the violin that starts a little late. So I'm going to bring that forward a little bit. Great. And then uh, with these notes, I'm going to fix length them. I'm just using a shortcut key. And then make sure they overlap. Great. Now they don't have to be perfect. You can quantize it um, to your liking. But um, again, when you go really fast, it's hard to hear those details. All right. On this one, I might quantize it just a little bit. Um, I'm going about 54%, so not much. And then I, I want to make sure they overlap. So I'm going to do fixed links to the eighth notes and then just stretch it out so they overlap each other. And then the last thing is when you uh, bring up that first bar um, with the MIDI event, it might cut off because that first note might be a little earlier than one. So make sure that is in, uh, aligned. And then after that point, you're ready to do some magic. So, well, first thing is uh, you can go ahead and activate the tempo track back to whatever tempo. In this case, it's 180 BPM. And let's hear that how that sounds together. Good, okay, great. Now, that's still um, not fast enough for me, right? So. What we want to do is we want to go half of that. Good, let's try again. All right, and how I did that, I'm going to undo, is actually I went to the sizing applies time stretch, or you, you press one three times, and then you just half that value. So all, all the uh, relationships of the notes um, will stay intact, but it's actually just, um, it's going to be divided in half, essentially. Okay, great. And if you um, want to do something crazy, uh, then you can, you know, make three of them at the same time. Good, right? So all of a sudden, you can you can mess around with the sounds uh, accordingly. Now that um, going back to here. Another tip is if you are planning to also double that uh, in the cello and bass, you are now have two different performances, right? Um, uh, again, if you look over to the notes, they're not quite exactly the same. They're a little bit smeared. Um, the If you look down to the expression and the CC1, they're also a little bit different. So what you could do then is maybe copy the viola part to the bass and the violins to the cello. Um, of course, the cello and bass can't play that high, so I'm gonna bring that down. And maybe on the bass too, like if you wanted to double, uh, do a, a, a triple thing going on with the basses. Uh, so this is the lowest octave, this is the uh, middle, and then so on, it goes higher from there. You can do that. I accidentally messed that up. Let's try that now. Cool. So that's the idea behind writing stream parts um, 
uh, with accuracy, right? Now, um, that was just a very simple idea. And notice that um, I have four notes per bar. So that's those are 16th notes. Uh, there's also a way to stretch these type of runs out so they're not uh, fours or they're not sixes, even numbers all the time. You can also do fives. You can also do seven. So if you look at a John Williams score, um, a lot of these runs will go um, in sevens with the woodwinds and strings. And what that means is uh, if we count up from here, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So meaning if you can get seven notes into uh, one or two beats and then have this last note right here, that top note, land on the third beat, then all of a sudden uh, you'll have sevens. Okay, and same same rules apply. So uh, I like using this tool again. So the sizing applies time stretch within within uh, cube base. I mean, there's probably one uh, exactly the same for these other DAWs. And then what you want to do is you, you want to stretch that out so that that top note. Let's see if I can uh, show you that better. Yeah. So that top note lands on B3. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, um, what I can do then is I can delete this bottom part, and then now you have a clean uh, major scale run uh, for two beats. And that is seven notes again, so those uh, uh, septuplets, I think you call them. You can do a septuplet run with that last note being on the downbeat. All right, um, so that's my tip for today. If you ever need to uh, program in your string runs, you can always do that accordingly with the uh, following tricks. I'm gonna uh, summarize that for you. You gotta um, smear your rhythm so they're not exactly on the grid. And uh, also within each voice, uh, make sure that there's a little bit of variety. Second is to uh, work on the the dynamics, um, the uh, CC11, CC1 stuff. And last is uh, mess with the timing. So when you record, you can uh, uh, go nice and slow and then um, you can time stretch it to your choosing after. All right, well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. If you guys wanna learn more on how to produce better or if you wanna write better. I am now offering private lessons for uh, composition and music production. So um, as a film scorer myself, I can show you everything I've learned in the past uh, using tricks of the trade. And also if you want to learn more on the technology side, I have that down as well. Um, there is a, a email on the link descri description below. Please hit me up if you are interested. Also, please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later.